It's already past 2300, and it's still a long way to Feng Tian. Major Tsuji, what is this about? Why the special train in the middle of the night to escort this girl to Japan? She looks pretty ordinary to me. Hell if I know. There's no telling what the big shots in Tokyo were thinking. <laughs> Next time I see you know who, I'll ask her, okay? Ah, yes. I understand. I'll make this short. Okay, okay. By the mercy of the Blue Dragon. No, no, it may have been a curse. Lily's pretty voice was switched with her father's gruff voice. And the only way to get her own beautiful voice back was for her to kill her father. Having fallen in love with an actor in a traveling troupe, Lily took my ceremonial dagger to kill her father. That's where we left off, correct? That's right. Give me the sharpest knife so that my father won't suffer for too long. Horrible, isn't it? <sighs> Just thinking about it gives me the shivers. I still remember the horror. Lily's pretty lips spoke those horrible words in the gruff voice of an old fisherman. She didn't kill her father right away, though. She couldn't. Every night, she would go to her father's bedroom and stand beside his bed. 
she would lay the dagger on her father's bearded throat. But still, she couldn't commit the final act. She would just stand there in silence for a while. Then she would leave the room with tears in her eyes. Every night, the same routine. But actually, her father was not asleep. He was ready to die if it meant that his daughter would have her beautiful voice back. The daughter, standing at her father's bedside. The father, pretending to be asleep while his daughter places a dagger to his throat. My heart aches every time I picture the scene. And finally, the troop was ready to move out of the fishing village the next day. Lily made up her mind and entered her father's bedroom again. But the bedroom was empty. Her father knew she'd leave the village with the theater troupe, so he thought, I'll send her off with a little something. And he had gone out to sea in search of some fish you could catch only on the night of New Moon. But irony of ironies, that very night, a storm rolled in and the seas raged wildly. The next day, the sun reappeared and rose high overhead, but there was still no sign of Lily's father. It was just like that night some while ago. Then, as the sun was going down again, the debris of a fishing boat washed ashore from the crimson red ocean. Everyone knew her father was dead. Lily cried and cried in despair. Now neither her voice nor her father would ever return. Her cries echoed all over the village. Cries like a wounded beast. Oh! 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 The young man from the theater troupe went to Lily's house to console her. But she would not let him in. Of course, he never knew that the hideous cries coming from the other side of the wall were Lily's own. Late that evening after the sun went down, the cries came again. Oh! 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 Lily's voice had grown hoarse from her endless wailing, making it sound even more fearsome. But then, another very strange sound joined in. Slip, slip, that. It was like a wet, sloppy piece of meat slithering across the ground. The sound was coming from the harbor, and it was getting closer and closer. Slip, 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 splat. Help. And then the gulls started to screech, too, perhaps because they wanted that meat. Shloop. Shwee! Shwee! Shloop. Shloop. Splat. Shloop. 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 
Sleep. Sleep. The sound stopped right in front of Lily's house. Soon, the door began to open. Creak. See, mother. See, mother. You've grown into a beautiful young woman, Kuihua. Since I saw you last. The sound of your playing has become so much richer. So what do you think, Zhen? Why is it that the march of time, the endless rising and setting of the sun, has to be so cruel to us old folks? <laughs> At any rate, Zhen, here I am, back in Shanghai. I intend to clean things up once and for all. The legacy of Huga, who passed on so long ago. Well, perhaps next time. the unfettered power of a god. But compared with what I had in mind, it is mere child's play. Well, for Dehuai, I suppose I must admit it's something of an achievement. Well, there's no sense in my lingering here. I believe I shall return to London and have myself a spot of tea. Well then, ta-ta everyone. If you survive, I hope you'll come and pay me a visit there someday. <laughs> Don't! That day, the flames were almost beautiful as they turned Shanghai to ash. 
In the blink of an eye, they took away so much. Thoughts, hopes, dreams. And as they watched their world burn, the people cried out in grief. It was like a scene from hell. One of our own making. And that night was the last time I ever saw him. My mother told me that too. That she and I are people like anyone else. It's just that when we were born, God gave us some powers that are a little different. But that's not the way those guys saw it. The Friar Knights of the Inquisition decided from the start that my mother was a witch. and they locked her up in a mental hospital. All my mother did was to use her special powers to help people who were possessed by ghosts, or to cure people who were hurt. She didn't fight back at all, because they threatened to kill me if she did. They weren't my mother's enemies at all. It was all because of me. All because of me. Of all my disciples, he stood out as the finest. In fact, he was too good. Having come from the lowest and poorest class of society, Albert lifted himself up and applied himself diligently to study so that he could change the world. I saw great promise in him, and I taught him everything I knew. Law, philosophy, science, astronomy, alchemy. But in time he began to question certain contradictions he saw in the world. The ruling classes and the subjected masses. He came to reject a world in which a person's place was determined by his birth, and he lost patience with me when I attempted to moderate his views. In the end, he brought me up on charges before the court of the Vatican. But it was he who the church condemned. Of course! In an age of absolutism, anyone who called for the granting of rights to individual citizens could do nothing but anger the powers that be, whether in the church or the state. Any such person was destined to be condemned as a heretic and locked away forever or tortured to death. The truth is, I knew that he was right. But I also knew that a world in which everyone could live as equals was nothing but a pipe dream. Perhaps it could be achieved in time, as knowledge spread more widely among the people. But for that age, it was an idea much too far ahead of its time.
achieve it. Behold! The worms who convicted me in Nuremberg 400 years ago. Behold the fruits of your folly. This light, this storm, now is the end of the world! Oh, glorious throne of the Lord on high, Yamato. This is indeed the signpost to a new tomorrow. The medium by which God shall bestow a new future on a world despoiled by human corruption. Oh God, at last the time has come. From the distant reaches of the universe and time, descend now upon this earth! <sighs> thousands upon thousands before me have tried, but failed. But I am the one who will finally achieve it! a moment before she died. It awakened in me the blood of my father that had been lying dormant. A fire ignited within me, and my emotions exploded like a hurricane. I don't really remember anything after that. The next thing I knew, the room was littered with the torn up body parts of the monsters that had killed my mother. Was the only one left alive in a house covered with blood. I clung to my mother's cold corpse all night long, weeping and begging her to forgive me for failing to keep my promise to my father, for failing to protect her. I could never stand to feel that way again. So the day that I failed to protect you, is the day that I too will die. Father, would you listen to me for just a few minutes? The world today seems to be heading toward disaster. No, no, I'm not talking about Albert. The countries known as the Powers are pouring massive sums of money into building up their militaries. Like children vying for the biggest collection of toys. <laughs> and you know, at first, I thought I would just use Yuri and the others. I thought I could use their remarkable powers to benefit our nation. Yes, just like the Japanese army was trying to do. But the more I watched that reckless Yuri in action, the more ashamed I started to feel. I mean, Yuri really isn't thinking about anything. He's not thinking of a national interest, or of politics, or of money, or of anything he has to gain or lose. He just sees that girl, and he sees all the forces lined up against her. And so, he protects her. Nothing more. Just like some comic book hero, you know. But I'm a little jealous. 
I mean, the really important things in life aren't about profit and gain, right? I think maybe I'll start searching for those things too. The truth is, I'd really like to search for them together with him, but... Oh, forget I said that. Thanks for listening to all my silly talk. Ah, it feels so wonderful! I feel so truly alive at this moment! I've never felt such a rapturous feeling of bliss! To live, to peer into tomorrow's tomorrow, that is my deepest desire! You, my friends, have liberated me from the prison of endless tedium. And no matter what may await me in the days and months ahead, I shall never regret it. With this sword in my hand, I shall travel with you all to the very end, to be witness to the tomorrow that we create with our very own hands. I'm not sure when it was that I started to feel the way I do about you. You can be so short-tempered and foul-mouthed sometimes, and yet so graceful and strong and pure. Would you be surprised if I told you that I sometimes wished our journey together would never end? I don't know where that journey will end. But I'm frightened when I start to feel it coming. You've survived so many hardships since you were a child. Overcome such pain. I'm certain it was because your mother and father gave you so much love when you were small. And that's why. Even if you don't put it in words, you're always teaching me just exactly what love is. I'm so grateful that I met you. So truly, truly grateful. Why do I worry so? I'm blessed with true friends. I have enemies to battle and my body remains strong enough to face any challenge. Can there be any greater happiness than this? Do not waver. Forge ahead. The blood of the Harmonixer. The power of fusion. You've come this far since awakening, have you not? You're a man, aren't you? You must not halt your steps. When you choose of your own free will to halt your steps, that will signify true defeat. Go. Continue to place one foot before the other. For every man there is a resting place. Grit your teeth, and no matter what setbacks you may suffer along the way, continue on to that place. That is victory. <laughs> Don't look at me like that. You've grown, son. That little boy that used to hide behind his mother's back when I came home has grown big and strong. Do you remember the garden you and I made for your mother in the backyard? I only wish I had had more time. And so, our battle came to an end. The god, awakened by human hands, was returned to sleep once again by human hands. On the morning after, a refreshing breeze blew across Wales, 
and the horrible events leading up to yesterday seemed like nothing more than a bad dream. Soon, it was time to say farewell to everyone. Keith, our handsome vampire, grew weary of the hustle and bustle of the outside world, and so he returned once again to his peaceful castle in Transylvania. I wonder how many centuries he'll sleep this time. Good night and sweet dreams, dear friend. Master Zhu Zhen, our brave Taoist adept, has gone back to Shanghai to mend the disruptions in the energy fields of China. You taught us so much, Master Zhu Zhen. Thank you from the bottom of our hearts. And please, try not to overexert yourself. Our beloved spy for hire said she planned to go home to Paris, but she joked about how her next assignment was probably already waiting for her. So, there's no telling where she might be right now. Hallie, that cute little street boy we met in London, set sail from Southampton with his mother, Kodelka, to find his long-lost father in America. Finally, they'll be able to live together as a family. I pray you'll all find happiness. As for me, I'm headed for Zurich, where my mother's waiting. With Yuri, of course.
As the warlock said in the end, even if an age of winter comes bringing the harshest hardships, I intend to live on with my new family. As the Warlock said in the end, even if another age of storms buffets this world, I intend to go on living and fighting for you who freed me from the darkness, for the one I love.